Falcons 22 back here again doing another dip review for you guys this time because I am finally back in the States after spending an incredible six months in Europe and I am finally I finally got my hands on a can of Grizzly Wide Cut and I have not tried this yet. This is actually going to be the first time I have ever experienced this and I've heard really good things. So let's go ahead and check it out. Um, what I'm going to talk to you guys about because, geez, I've been off YouTube for a long time now. Um, and it's really just because, sorry, I've been in Europe. I've been living my life. I don't have time to make a bit. Well, I do have the time to make a video like every week if I wanted to. But at the same time, I'm busy like, I don't know, partying and traveling and now hanging out in my basement playing a lot of duty. So that's why I've been off YouTube for so long. It's good to be back. I hope everybody is having a fantastic summer. Let's go ahead and get right into the review. This is actually the first, one of the first reviews I've done in a fucking coon's age. So right into the can, oh yeah, my little sister is here with me. So if you find me censoring words or whispering, fuck, then that's probably because you she's- You don't care. Okay, all right, all right, she doesn't care. Um, so anyways, moving right into the review of Grizzly Wide Cut. At first, I didn't even think this was a different can than any other normal wintergreen Grizzly can, right? Um, the one thing I did notice is cracking these things. I'm not sure if it's the paper on the outside, but it's so easy to crack these things. I barely have any fingernails, and I was able to crack this no problem. So that's a plus in my book. Very easy to crack. Um, definitely easier than a Copenhagen can. Um, so there's that. The aesthetic, I, I guess, again, it's just kind of the same thing as a normal Grizz Wintergreen can. Not really much different here. The same, uh, I don't know, the same label, the same color, really. The only thing that's different is just this silver, I don't know, ribbon across the front, wide cut. So let's go ahead and see if that rings true. Oh my god. What is, ho oh, ho. All right. So again, this, the, this is a fresh can. This is a brand new can. I have not opened this. I have not tried it ever. Damn. This is actually, this looks really good and it feels really good. So let's go ahead and, oh lordy. This is pretty much like a sponge of dip that has just been compressed into this can. And I can already tell the texture is phenomenal. It's a lot better than I ever would have expected from Grizzly. What? Okay, so right, th I'm barely even trying to pinch anything right there. And that is what I come out with. What? That is really crazy. That's really awesome, actually. Um, I can't really notice, like, I guess I have not examined a cut of dip closely enough to see how wide cut it is or anything, but just the fact that this pinch is very similarly to Copenhagen Natural, the extra long cut, makes me believe, okay, yeah, it actually is wide cut. It's not just a relabeling on Grizzly's part. So let's go ahead and mm, cheers. Oh, we have a little bit left. You got to leave a little bit quicker than that. Mm, mm, all right. Again, not spitting in my mud jug uh, because I don't know where it is. Actually, I lost it, so uh, fuck all of you who say, oh, you need to get a mud jug. Just spitting into my normal my normal Dasani water bottle, so deal with it. All right, so what are we going to talk about today? Um, first, obviously, I'm back home from exchange in Europe. I'm back home, back in Colorado. Um, and so really, the last, the last review I did was what, Italy? Yeah, that was after the Italy trip, and... That was a good month and a half before I came back to the States and everything. So in the meantime, I was just soaking up the time in Rotterdam. Wonderful city, by the way. I absolutely I love Rotterdam, the Netherlands. If you ever get the chance, go to Amsterdam. Amsterdam's fun and everything. I love Amsterdam, but Rotterdam is just, it's always going to have a special place in my heart. So got back from there. Um, let's see, where else did I go? Went to Paris. Paris was really cool. Kylie, my little sister, actually, that's not her name. But my parents um, and my little sister came to visit me in Paris, like we met up in Paris and everything. And if there's any place you should go see with your parents in Europe, Paris is it because it is so expensive, but it's so worth it. Any place you go in, everything they've ever said about French food, absolutely true. It is the best goddamn food I've ever had in my entire life. Every single bite of every dish is phenomenal. It's amazing. So if you go to Paris, make sure to check out the Louvre. The Louvre is cool. Tons of art, tons of history. Like, obviously, the Mona Lisa is there. So a bunch of famous uh, art pieces. I didn't get the chance to go to the Musée d'Orsay, uh, regrettably, because I'd heard from everybody that it's a fantastic museum. So go check that out. Um, where else did we go? 
We went to uh, Montmartre, actually, which is a neighborhood outside of Paris, and it's pretty much where all these artists live during the Belle Époque, like the best time to be an artist in Paris. And that was where like Picasso came up with Cubism. That was where Van Gogh was living for a while um, before he killed himself and everything. And then uh, a bunch of movies have been filmed there. It's just a very eclectic. I think Hemingway used to hang out at uh, some of the cabarets back there and everything. So if you ever get the chance, go to Montmartre. It's a neighborhood just right outside of Paris. Phenomenal place. Very Paris. Very everything you think of when you think of Paris, France. To the contrary of everything that I've ever been told about Paris, everybody's like, oh, you're going to hate the Paris. They're such pussies. They're such assholes to tourists. Not really. I mean, I, okay, granted, I did make at least a little bit of an effort to speak French to them. Désolé de vous déranger, like, je, or, uh, what, je me, I have, je te, how do you say I have? Comment dites, I, je, j'ai une réservation sur le nom de Tom Nelson, je suis son fils. I am his son. That was about all I fucking learned. And it was just enough to get past the initial, hey, I'm an American in Paris. If you make at least that little bit of an effort to speak French to the people in Paris, they'll be awesome to you. I did not have a bad experience really with anybody in Paris. So um, that was cool. Met my parents there. They went to Cologne because my dad works out of Cologne now. And then we ended up coming to Amsterdam. Kylie, what do you think about Amsterdam? Do you think it was cool? Yeah, I loved it. All right. Well, so my own, my entire family loved Amsterdam, which is awesome. No, I didn't take them to a coffee shop. I wish I did. But we were walking the red light district and everything, um, and Kylie actually had a bad experience because <laughs> she apparently redhead. She has red hair. Yes, I know. But apparently people with red hair are the most sought after in the sex trade, so that's just another reason why gingers get the shaft. They're the most sought after hair color in the sex trade and everything. So of course you go to the red light district, there's women in the windows, just naked girls and everything. They're knocking on the door like everybody's checking out my little sister and everything. I'm about to just mm, kill everybody. But so that was that. Said goodbye to my parents and then just wrapped up the rest of exchange. Didn't really study at all for finals. Still managed to pass all but one of my classes, but I don't really give a fuck. And then ended up just having these like parties every night because people were leaving. I was also there in Rotterdam at the time the World Cup was starting. So I was there when uh, I was in Rotterdam when the Netherlands beat Spain five to one in the World Cup, the first World Cup match. That was without a doubt one of the most ridiculous nights of my entire life because we went to the sport building on campus. It was kind of like the the gym or whatever, but they were showing the game. And they had, you know, beers for a Euro 50 or something like that. And everybody just was going nuts. When we scored the first goal, I'd never been a part of something that was just so like, ah, like crazy and everything. So it was definitely, it was an awesome time. And then I was also there when we beat Australia. Yeah, when we beat Australia too. Um, so it was, it was crazy. It was awesome to, again, go on exchange and go study abroad, go see the world and everything and meet all these people from these different places. Um, try and, I tried to get some of them ho hooked on dip, but none of them, I think, really picked it up. So I failed. But anyways, the Netherlands was absolutely awesome. I absolutely loved that country. I loved all of Europe. Every single place I went was my favorite place in some way or another. Morocco was absolutely amazing. So that was it. That was exchange. It was phenomenal. It's always something that, I don't know, I'm going to carry with me in my heart. So anyways, moving on. Um, I was, I actually just recently saw, I wasn't introduced to him until probably about, uh, about a month and a half, two months ago. Um, but I saw the interview, I think with Full Tilt Poker, somebody like that, but they did an interview, interview with, uh, Dan Bilzerian. And if you don't know who Dan Bilzerian is, please just go look up, go up to the YouTube, up to the search bar, just look up Dan Bilzerian. Um, and his stories, number one, his interview is fantastic. Number two, his video, when he tells the story about when he's had, I, he's had like two, yeah, two heart attacks and the dude's, I don't know, he's under 40. Um, but he just has the craziest stories. And granted, I know these people think, yeah, he's won $50 million playing poker, but he is a trust fund kid. So you can say that, you know, he's a privileged douchebag or, you know, something like that. Um, I personally think that Dan Bilzerian has this sort of honesty and I know he doesn't give a fuck about what I say about him. I don't really care about him anyways, but the fact is that 
that dude is honest and he just lives his life. You have to respect the fact that the dude lives his life. He doesn't play by anybody's rules. And really what he says and what I've kind of kept with me over uh, the past, I don't know, two, three weeks um, is that money is freedom. And I really kind of started thinking about that. Okay, if money is freedom, then money does kind of buy happiness in some way. Look at Dan Bilzerian. Dude, that guy's probably the happiest dude ever. Wakes up every morning, like gets to bang a new girl pretty much every night does a bunch of drugs, goes to Steve Aoki shows for free and gets to shoot a ton of guns. So if you want to just check him out on Instagram, um, I'm again, I'm not expecting Dan Bilzerian to follow me back or anything. I just happen to think he's an interesting dude. Um, and he's got a lot of really maybe, okay. Yeah. Some douchebaggy things to say, but also some very honest things to say. Um, and I would love, I don't know, maybe some Dan Bilzerian is the kind of dude where, you know, I would love to sit down and have a beer with him sometime. Um, so anyways, just go check him out. Instagram, Dan Bilzerian, his Instagram is fantastic. Check him out. All right. Next thing. Um, let's check out the little, I've got like a little outline on word right now because I'm a fucking loser. All right. Um, oh, Tony Gwynn. Oh my God. Rest in peace. Tony Gwynn. Um, the thing about Tony Gwynn is that we, so when I was in high school, our high school baseball team used to do this camp every year. And we would go to San Diego, or a uh, different school, but one year we went to San Diego State. For two years straight, actually, we went to San Diego State at the time that Tony Gwynn was coaching. And just I got the chance just for maybe 30 seconds, 45 seconds, to just sit and talk a little bit of baseball. Just literally take a lesson from Tony Gwynn, from the man himself. Literally one of the most upbeat dudes, one of the happiest dudes. Just He literally was like a black Santa Claus. And he was an awesome dude to talk to, just an awesome guy. Um, so when I heard about you know the fact that he had died and everything, it was really, it kind of took a toll on me just because he was such a personable dude. He, personable guy. He was such a cool guy to, to talk to and everything. And he knows the game of baseball. That said, uh, Tony Gwynn dipped probably a ridiculous amount. He probably dipped like a can and a half a day, two cans a day or something like that. Um, so he ended up getting salivary gland cancer. And then he ended up, I think, getting a tumor in his uh, lip or in his cheek or something like that, uh, which eventually killed him and everything. And so now, of course, everybody's all up in arms. Oh, this only proves that smokeless tobacco is harmful. This only proves that, you know, this, that or the other. Okay. I can see why people would say that because obviously the guy had salivary gland cancer. You don't get salivary gland cancer from really anything else but dip. But at the same time, let's look at the other side of the coin. Tony Gwynn was also severely overweight. Loved the guy, but he was completely out of shape. Even when he was in the league and everything. I mean, that dude had a beer belly that was hanging out over his belt and everything. Um, probably not the healthiest dude. I mean, just judging by the fact that he was pretty obese and everything. So all I'm saying is that, yes, you can blame smokeless tobacco for Tony Gwynn's death. Maybe that's a good enough impetus for you to quit. I know for me, at least knowing that Tony Gwynn, even a legend like Tony Gwynn is capable of dying from smokeless tobacco, that kind of makes me want to quit a little bit. But at the same time, I'd also would like to think that I'm healthier than Tony Gwynn. I definitely work out. I definitely eat healthier than Tony Gwynn probably did. So again, we can't just unequivocally blame smokeless tobacco for the death of Tony Gwynn. You also have to take into account the fact that he probably didn't lead the healthiest lifestyle, da 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 all these different things that could have contributed to the spread of his salivary gland cancer. So that's my thoughts about Tony Gwynn. Again, rest in peace. I absolutely, I love talking to you for like the 30 seconds I got to talk to you and everything. Um, so thanks. Thanks for everything. Thanks for what you did for uh, the game of baseball. All right. Anyways, um, moving on. I think this is actually, yes, the last little uh, bullet point. I've just been, obviously, since I've been off YouTube for a little while, I have had the chance to just kind of browse through my inbox and see all these crazy new comments that people are leaving on my videos and everything. So, so I took the liberty of going ahead and just selecting some of my, some of my favorite comments. Um, and some of them are just people that like, Hey, I, I really don't care. I just have a fun time responding to these people sometimes. And some people actually have like valid points to make on their comments. So let's get right to it. Clay, Clay Sloan says, you're, Y-O-U-R, so full of shit. You say, you're, Y-O-U-R, taking a big dip and you take a pussy dip. And you're play golf. You're, wrong form of you're, a bitch. Quit dipping, a suck, a dick. 
<laughs> All right, Clay, sick. Literally none of what you said makes any sense. I know I might be the grammar Nazi or whatever, but automatically, if you're using the wrong form of your, I just distrust you. Same thing, uh, If it's even if it's an adult, I've learned to just distrust adults that misuse grammar, that use the improper form of their, the improper form of your. I don't know. It's just something that I can't get over. So uh, thanks a lot, Gay Sloan. All right. Anyways, Jake Miniker. Um, this was on, oh my God. This was on uh, the five types of dip or the whatever, the five types of dippers we all know. Jake Miniker says, this is the stupidest shit I've ever seen. I bet those are the only four dips you've ever had. Yeah, you're totally right, Jake. Those are the only four dips I've ever had. I've been dipping for what, five, six years now? Yeah, those are the only four dips I've ever had. Fuck off, loser. All right. Anyways, this is absolutely, this is one of my favorite comments, not only because the comment itself is fantastic, but because the dude's username, the dude that wrote it, uh, his picture, number one, is hilarious. It's just him with this crazy pencil pedophile mustache and this crazy ass hair, and his username is Moist Andy. This is what Moist Andy has to say. All caps. This entire thing is in all caps. Tobacco is just a plan, and the fast facist, F-A-C-I-S-T, Cock munching liberals want us to think that chewing it is harmful. Most mouth cancers are caused from sun exposure, HPV, and eating a shitty fucking diet. It's a business to keep dying patients rotting away on chemotherapy when hemp oil is a scientifically proven cure. Restricting the use of plants is a terrible loss for humanity. Yes. Thank you so much, Moist Andy. I could not agree more with that entire statement. I personally think that cancer is an industry. Cancer keeps a lot of people employed. And I've, I've gone over this in one of my previous videos, but cancer keeps a lot of people employed. Tony Gwynn obviously keeps a lot of people employed. Chemotherapy, radiology, oncology, all that sorts of stuff. Cancer just keeps a lot of people employed. It makes a lot of money for a lot of people. So I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Maybe there is a cure. Maybe there's not. I'm not going to pretend like there is some cure and that people are hiding it from us because I'd like to believe better of the human race. But at the same time, you can't deny the fact that cancer makes a lot of money for a lot of people. So that's uh, some of my favorite comments. Uh, again, thank you guys for watching. That's actually the end of all the all the shit that I have to say. Um, so I am going to come back. One of my future videos, I didn't get the chance to do it in Europe. I did start filming some different segments for it and everything. But I wanted to make a video of all the crazy new drinking games that I learned abroad, just traveling around, meeting all these different people and all these crazy drinking games um, that people play. So, for example, let's see, what kind of drinking games do we play? Asshole, yeah, presidents and assholes. Some people call it presidents, some people call it assholes, some people call it presidents and assholes. Asshole, uh, beer pong, um, let's see, cigarillo, which is absolutely the best drinking game ever, 21, pim pam poom, um... Let's see. Never, I never have I ever. Obviously, I'll tell you the best never have I ever questions uh, in my next video that I've ever heard or that I've ever come up with, um, and then just some of the other drinking games that I've learned. Um, so thank you guys for watching. Oh, and I did want to do a video um, because obviously playing a ton of beer pong in the Netherlands and not going to class. Um, I think I finally have nailed down it. And granted, I'm not the world's best beer pong player, but I'm definitely up, I'm definitely a good beer pong player. I hold my own. And I think I finally nailed down the perfect technique, the perfect beer pong technique for the perfect shot. So I'll tell you guys about that in my upcoming video. Again, thank you guys for watching. Hope you're all having a fantastic summer. Oh, and I guess I should wrap up this review on Grizzly Wide Cut. Okay. So here's the thing. Normally grizzly, okay, grizzly goes into your lip and it's very hard. It's not very texturally good. It's not very, it doesn't sit comfortably in your lip, right? Grizzly wide cut, this stuff is very different. If I didn't know any better, I would have assumed that I was taking a dip of Copenhagen mint or Copenhagen, mint. I actually haven't had Copenhagen mint, but Copenhagen wintergreen or something like that. The flavor is unlike anything grizzly I think has ever put out. Normally you would associate grizzly with this sort of plasticky synthetic taste, and it's not really that way. This actually tastes like tobacco should taste. This tastes a lot like, it tastes closer to Copenhagen wintergreen than it does to grizz wintergreen which is kind of weird for me considering it's Grizz Wintergreen Wide Cut. Um, 
the texture, again, as I said, is phenomenal. This is sitting in my lip just magnificently. Um, and even, I would say, the buzz or the pick-me-up, I haven't really noticed it, again, because my tobacco intake, my nicotine intake, has been sky high, just smoking hand-rolled cigarettes and all that stuff in the Netherlands. Um, but at the same time, I can tell it's definitely a different buzz than what you would get from any other type of grizzly blend, uh, particularly grizzly wintergreen. Um, and so I absolutely, I love this stuff. Actually, if I, if I had to give it a final rating, there's nothing that I can really put my finger on. I, I would have to keep it in for a pretty long time, another, you know, 20, 30 minutes or so to see if it really held its own with Copenhagen wintergreen. But I personally really enjoy this stuff. I love the texture of it and I love how easy it is to pinch. I definitely will buy it again. So Grizzly Wintergreen, oh God, wide cut. If I had to give a final rating to it, I would definitely say probably probably a nine, nine and a half out of 10, um, which is higher than I've really given any other blend of Grizzly in the past. Um, definitely one of the only types of Grizzly. And uh, this was cheap. It was like $3.25 or something like that for a can. Um, so this is definitely the cheapest brand of Grizzly or the cheapest blend of Grizzly that I would definitely buy again. Not only because it's cheap, but because the flavor and the texture, everything is definitely a step above where I'm accustomed to seeing Grizzly. Um, so again, thank you guys for watching. Grizzly Wide Cut, awesome dip. I absolutely love this stuff. Um, I will be coming back. I realized I haven't done a review on Skull Fine Cut. Um, so I will definitely do a review on Skull Fine Cuts coming up, um, I don't know, probably probably in the next week or so since I've been, I don't know, doing nothing but just playing duty and playing a lot of golf. Um, and then I'll do the drinking game dip review probably in tandem with a golf dip review that I've been meaning to do for the longest time. So again, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Take it easy. Keep on dipping and enjoy your summers.